Hi everyone, I'm Elias Martin, uh, founder and uh, well, and owner of CollectingJapanesePrints.com, and uh, this is a very late edition of Woodblock Wednesday. Uh, I had hoped to do this yesterday. Actually, yesterday meaning uh, Wednesday. I'm coming from. I'm videotaping right now from uh, Kyoto, Japan, and so I thought I'd do it on my Wednesday and uploaded earlier today, but I lost my phone and uh, I'm trying to get it back. Uh, maybe I will get it back. And uh, so uh, I'm doing this uh, with my iPad. Hopefully this works out. Um, despite the setback with the phone, uh, it, I've had a really great trip, found some really wonderful things for the website. Uh, and I, I just kind of wanted to show you two uh, works, actually two magazines, that are really neat that you'll see uh, up on the site soon. Uh, and you know, I wanna talk about this because it's something that really gets neglected in the um, print community. Uh, we are, a lot of collectors tend to focus, I mean, clearly on, on prints, uh, but like on standalone prints, which is fine. Uh, but for Sosaku Hunga collectors, uh, the genre of uh, doujin magazines is a, um, an interesting area to collect. So we'll, we'll talk about that and what Dojin magazines are and, uh, and everything else. But uh, first of all, I wanted to talk about Sosaku Hanga. And Sosaku Hanga is a genre of printmaking in Japan. Uh, it started in 1904. Yamamoto Kanae started the movement by creating the first uh, woodblock that would he, a uh, woodblock print that he called uh, wood, a, I think it was a woodcut picture. Uh, I think that was a translation. Uh, but the point is, uh, Yamamoto Kanae carved the block, designed the, the print, and printed the work himself. At the time, uh, that was a bit of, of a revolutionary process. Uh, prints were produced uh, usually with the collaborative process that started in the Edo period and continued on uh, in the Shinhanga movement, where there was a publisher who hired an artist who then um, designed the, uh, the, the print and there was a woodblock carver or carvers and printers who produced the actual woodblock print. And um, for the Sosaku Hanga artists, they did everything themselves. They wanted to use woodblock printing as a means to express their own uh, creativity. They thought that woodblock uh, prints were sort of uh, indigenous, a, a traditional indigenous um, art form to Japan and best uh, at expressing the Japanese aesthetic, uh, but they wanted to, to express their own ideas, not just uh, the ideas of, a, of the publisher who wanted to produce um, the design for commercial purposes. Um, and so because of that, Sosaku Hanga prints early on uh, weren't highly collected, they weren't produced in mass numbers, and one of the means that the Sosaku Hanga artists uh, sort of distributed their ideas, um, because they were also not shown in the salons of uh, Japan, uh, the way that they communicated um, their artistic ideas was by producing artwork that went into magazines that were sort of self um, designed by, I, I, I hate to use the word publisher, but there was a, an organi organizing body that put together the, the collection of prints for every issue. But all the prints in these magazines, particularly the one I will talk about today, the Chiro Tokuro, uh, which translates to white and black, uh, and these magazines uh, were done from 1930 to 1934. There were an addition, there was a run of 50 issues. And I can't give you the exact numbers of each magazine. I'm not sure what the the addition would be, but there were a handful. I mean, I, I, I would estimate anywhere between 20 to 50. I can't imagine more than those numbers were produced. Uh, and all of the prints in these magazines were done by various Sosaku Hanga artists. Uh, some notable artists that uh, participated in these um, in this magazine uh, was Senpan Onchi, and one uh, particular favorite of mine, Taninaka, Taninaka Yasunori, and uh, his his prints were 
it were really heavily featured in, in the magazines. There's at least one issue where it was just his artwork. And, um, but all of the prints found in the magazines, by and large, were self-carved, self-printed uh, works and that were sent to the organizing body that put together the magazines, and then the magazines were sent to the subscribers. So um, you, you'll see that the, all of the designs are really imag imaginative. They're very um, what well, unique. They're, they're not, you won't see completely sort of a, 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 uh, an aesthetic that is sort of the consensus of the magazine other than this naive sort of self-taught uh, woodblock print artist. A lot of them are black and white. So there is a, sort of a focus on the black and white image, but a lot of them are so in color. So it, 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 I think it's called black and white to emphasize the the one printing stage in a, of a lot of these. So it's the, a lot of the designs um, are focused with black and white as as a major theme, and they take advantage of that. But a lot of also a lot of prints were in color. So you know, I've talked quite a bit now. Let's look at some artwork. Let me just flip my camera over. All right. Now you have to excuse the lighting in here. We're in my hotel room. And this is the cover of one. I'll give you an example of what these magazines look like. So this is the title page of the colophon. You'll get all of the artists that participated in the magazine and then uh, their corresponding page number where the uh, actual print um, is listed in the magazine. The artist uh, names are at the bottom. This is kind of hard to do with it with a big iPad and one hand, but I'm, I'm trying my best. And as I said, a lot of these artists are basically self-taught uh, woodblock print artists, and a lot of these designs are not sophisticated, um, and they're they're meant to be expressive, but they have a really wonderful raw power about them, uh, an immediate sort of expressive quality. Uh, this is a really charming design of a deer uh, up near a tree, and you see a figure with an umbrella in the background. And again, this is done completely in, in black and white. You know what's interesting also about these prints that a lot of the designs show the changing landscape uh, in Japan. You, you see a lot of smokestacks, iron bridges, and a lot of these designs. And these artists were very proud of the of all of the changes that were occurring throughout Japan, and even uh, the the countryside that started getting a lot of these bridges. I mean, they were very proud of these uh, and considered sort of a, a, a iron bridge as a symbol of, of sort of modern, um, so modernity basically arriving in the area. So um, I just think it's really interesting to be able to, to see that uh, changing landscape from that, from the early 20th century, uh, you know, where, where you really see just the countryside and kind of changing into more of an a urban um, environment. Now, the, the other... I have two magazines to show you. Uh, this is another one. I think this is one's also really neat. And one of the things I want to point out that on this magazine, this this part is cut out and, and 
basically pasted onto this piece of paper. So this is a woodblock print and the cover it looks very homemade. I mean that's the kind of charming quality of these magazines. And in this particular magazine I just want to highlight really quick one woodblock print by one of my favorite artists. I collect him. I, I really am a big advocate of his artwork. His name is, I, I mentioned him before, uh, Taninaki, Taninaka Yasunori. And uh, this particular design is that you see the, actually the artist in here. I think that that's him. Uh, there's a, a policeman inside this sort of little area. It's probably like a policeman's sort of phone booth type of uh, contraption. And then uh, it's the, it's a nighttime uh, scene, and you see this, the sky is uh, dark with this. Though it's not the moon, it sort of creates a moon-like effect. It's I, I think it's a, a light there, and then there's a sort of an entertainment district where you see these stairs that go down, and either this is a movie or a cabaret. You see a figure here. It looks like fe a female figure, but it could also be a mermaid. He was very fond of these, you know, whimsical mermaid uh, figures. And this is, this is sort of, sort of a surreal sort of uh, dreamscape of his. He's highly imaginative. His designs in some, sometimes don't make any sense. They're almost like, um, almost, they remind me of Dali paintings. They're, they're more stream of consciousness, uh, images that make sense if you see them in fragments, but then at the, again, put together. Uh, it's a really great work. I mean, that, this is, I believe, from 1933, and it's one of his most sought-after designs. The The print is c colored by hand around the, the design, which is kind of neat, and it's printed in black and white as well as color, and you can see the, the, the strong applications of color over the design. Uh, so, th I mean, this is an example of one of his best uh, known works. Uh, and, and so if you don't know Taninaka Yasunori, I encourage you to look him up and look at his body of work. And of course, if you're inter interested in learning more or perhaps purchasing prints uh, by this artist, please contact me. I, I carry these on my website when I get them. And um, the other thing I want to point out on this uh, trip is uh, I've been able to acquire a large library of books. So I'm going to be uh, fully stocking my my bookstore. And one of the books that I've acquired uh, that will be for sale is a compendium. It's a book that basically illustrates and lists every single doujin magazine produced in Japan from 1905 through 1944. That is a tremendous feat. So you can see how thick this is. This is this is like, this looks like something like like a Bible or a huge encyclopedia. Uh, so anyway, it just basically just illustrates every single print that's been uh, added in a every single magazine. We're talking about thousands of magazines in here, thousands of pictures, thousands of prints in these magazines. It's it's actually an amazing amazing work of scholarship. And so this book will be up on my website uh, coming up soon when I return. So let me just hold the camera over. So I want to thank all of you for joining me. This is the the third installment of Woodblock Wednesday. It's uh, I guess I could call it late uh, night Woodblock Wednesday. Uh, sorry about not being able to see you earlier today uh, in the day. And we uh, looked at some really neat uh, works from a Dojin magazine. Uh, and particularly, we focused on Taninaka Yasunori, uh, an artist who, whose work was featured quite a bit in uh, these doujin magazines. So um, I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the latest episode and look for me to, uh, next Wednesday for sure. I'm not exactly sure the exact time, probably one o'clock. I should be back in Chicago by then and we'll talk about something else. So thank you. I look forward to seeing you soon.